Happy Friday Knitters. I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to the March episode of Finished Fridays. It is the last Friday in March. If you are new to my channel, I am here usually every Monday showing you two new cast-ons that I start for the upcoming week and I also pop in on the last Friday of the month showing you what I have finished. I get a lot of messages saying, Louise, you're starting two new projects every week, but do you ever finish anything? And yes, I do. Not very fast and <laughs> it doesn't seem like I'm making a lot of progress on things when I'm starting so many new things, but... I have a considerable amount of stash that I really want to knit through this this year. And my kind of motto is, is that I can't finish if I don't start. So I've been starting and I do have some finishes to show you. Now I have one really, really, really big finish that I am super excited about that I'm going to show you right at the very end. I'm going to try to pique your curiosity and see if you've been following me on Instagram or Facebook. You may have seen the finished picture already. If not, stay tuned and I will show you in just a few minutes. But first, let me show you what I have finished the month of March up until now. There's a, there is technically a few more days left in March, but I'll show you what I've got finished so far. A lot of them are dishcloths because I am trying to do a dishcloth a week. My goal is to get at least 52 done, if not a few more. And, I'll, and I have so far, March, January, February, March, three months into the year and I'm keeping on track. And I dare say I might be a little bit ahead of schedule. I'm gonna count them here with you so we can all see um, how I'm doing so far. Let me show you what I've got. If you've seen my Monday videos, you'll see you'll these these dishcloths will be a repeat for you because I do show my finished dishcloth every week. But I'll just recap them. So here is one. This was one that I was working on. This is actually three different part balls that I finished up. Bernat Handicrafter. This is my super simple diamond dishcloth pattern. And again, this is another one. So I think, oops, I'm guessing this one went like this. So an orange and white, orange, yellow, and pink. And then I did this pink and kind of bluish color to finish off. And then I started the pink and finished pink and blue variegated and finished it, finished off the beige, finished off the pink, and finished off the yellow. That again was my super simple diamond dishcloth and then here again. These are because just like the name says, they are super simple. They give you a nice finished square dishcloth. They have some extra rows at the halfway point to help give that, that transition point where from where you're increasing to where you're decreasing. There's some extra rows in here to help give it a nice rounded turn. And this was two part balls of the same colorway that I used in this one, finished that. This was the Knit Tweed dishcloth pattern. I really, really enjoyed making this. I'll give you a nice close up look at it. it is, I really enjoyed this. Now, if you are at all interested and knitting this. It's two colors. It was a knit below stitch. It was very fun and I really like how it turned out. If you would be interested in this pattern, leave me a comment below and what I can do is I can type up the pattern that I used to knit this and I will put it up on Ravelry as a free pattern. If you would like to give it a try, maybe use it in your own kitchen or put it in your gift box if you're thinking about Christmas knitting at all housewarming gifts, whatever you might possibly need. A dishcloth gift for. The other one, this was another fun one. I just finished this last week. This is the almost lost washcloth pattern. Again, it is a free pattern on Ravelry. This is not one of my designs, but this was a really, really fun in the round knit. That one was finished. What else do I have here? 
This is, oh, this is a little sneak preview to this coming Monday's video. This was the new start that I started this week and I finished it. So I'll be showing this one again on Monday, but you guys will get a little sneak peek here. Now this is a stitch pattern that I found in a vintage stitch pattern book. And it is called the double, I think it was just called a double knit, double knit stitch possibly. And what it basically is, it's like a heel, um, the heel flap and gusset where you're slipping stitches, except this is done all with purl stitches. So there is the one side. So you can see the slip stitches, those little, the horizontal strands there, those are the slip stitches. And then the, there is this side. And I think this side is supposed to be the right side. It does, you can see how it gives a little bit of texture. It almost looks like rib columns. And, there, and you can feel a raised ridge there. There are some um, knit through the back stitches, slip stitches, and the rest are purl stitches. So it was kind of interesting. So if you would be at all interested in giving this one a shot, Again, leave me a message below in the comments, and if there are a handful of people interested in it, I will type this up as well as a free um, pattern that you could, I mean, you could use this. It works nice as a dishcloth, and I'm not even sure, it might possibly work well as a pot holder because those slip stitches does create a double thickness. So it might work well. I haven't trusted this one in the kitchen to see if it would work well pulling hot, um, like a cookie sheet or a baking dish out of the oven, but it quite possibly could. If you're interested in this one, let me know and I'll type up a pattern for this one as well. The last thing that I have before we get to my really exciting one are my mittens. Now I think in last month's Finish Friday video, I showed you one mitten finished and now I have a finished pair. I had talked about doing some embroidery on the back of them but nah, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna leave them. I did a really nice long cuff on them and they can be rolled up if you want. So this again, now I did a video last weekend. If you haven't seen last weekend's video, it was all about doing the burn test on yarn because I had talked about this a few times. This was just a, a random ball of yellow yarn from my stash. I assumed it was wool because that's typically what I buy, but when I started working with this yarn, I was thinking, hmm, I don't think this is wool. I'm pretty sure this is acrylic. And we talked about doing the burn test. So I did a burn test on this yarn and three others, just to see what acrylic, wool, and cotton, how it burns. So you can check out that video from last week if you're at all curious to see how the different fibers burn when they're when they have flame introduced them to them. It's, um, it's a little eye-opening, actually. Anyways, finished pair of mitts. These are my super simple mitten pattern. And again, super simple, perfect for your first pair of mitts. They're knit on double pointed needles with worsted weight yarn, and they are interchangeable. These, this pattern is written, you just knit two mitts, the exact same, and they will work whether you put them on the left or the right hand. Super simple. I like things that are super simple. So those are my finishes. Now what I will, okay, so let me just do a quick count here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so seven, so plus eight, because I have the one I haven't shown you yet. So I've had eight finishes this month. Now I've done a whole lot of other knitting on bigger projects, more sweaters and shawls that I've started throughout the month and through February and through January that I'm still working away on. But mittens and dishcloths, they're great. If you wanted to feel that sense of accomplishment, <laughs> these are quick and easy to cast on and get off the needles. So I also grabbed my other dishcloths that I have finished. These are the, this is what I've started and finished since January. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is actually going to be a nice little pile. Look at that. 
oh my goodness this this really <laughs> makes me happy so i did a quick count to see what week we are on into the month and we are into the 13th week so i have to have more way more than 13 dishcloths here so bear with me while i do a quick little count one one two three four five oh this was the four corners dishcloth five mitered square dishcloth is six a b stitch is seven oh my gosh and see when i held that up i immediately go to that one row where i messed up this is staying in my my dishcloth pile for sure i can't give that one away seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen oh my gosh guys okay that way that caught me up to date 13 14 15 and 16. i've got three extra dishcloths in here so that gives me a little buffer so if there's a week um I've got a couple weeks that if I happen to not get one done, I do not need to panic. But I cannot tell you how happy this makes me seeing this stack of dishcloths. This is all going to go into my Christmas box. And minus this B-stitch one. I don't know why I had trouble doing this B-stitch one. But every time I hold this up and I see that one row right down there at the bottom, that's mucked up i will it, it makes me think it makes me remember my friends at knit, knit night at starbucks because i'm pretty sure that that's where i messed up knitting and talking but anyways that's okay i'll keep that it's yellow it'll fit perfect in my kitchen i'll keep that for myself but anyway those are my dishcloths i'm like super super happy with those so i have also remember my box my finished ball band box that all my ball bands, because I'm keeping track of the yards, yards, meters, my meters, I guess is what I've been counting, that I have been knitting, because I want to keep track, because I've seen all these other people say at the end of the year that they've knit so many miles of yarn, so many meters, so many grams, so many whatever, and I'm thinking, I really want to keep track this year too. So this is what I have got in here. It's a big box with not many ball bands in it, but I'm getting there. So what I have done is I kept track for, so for March out of all my dishcloths, because you get more than one dishcloth out of a ball, sometimes three in a bit, I kept track. So for March, I had three finished ball bands. My patents, stretchy sock yarn, that was from my European road trip shawl that is in progress. Um, I love this cotton. That is the yellow. That is the yellow bee stitch one that I messed up on. That was um this cotton yarn and a burnett handicrafter i think this was the poppy this was some of the orange and white variegated those three balls i totally finished this month i did a little adding of these ones plus i had three others here from january and february six ball bands that is nuts and you know what actually when i'm thinking about this now I think I should actually be adding another one in here because some of my, these scrappy dishcloths, like, if I go back here, this pink in this, I think this was the last little bit of the, I love this cotton ball band, but this pink, this beige, and this variegated, they were just the little tiny balls that I had. So really I should be kind of estimating what I used for those, but anyways. Well, I'll worry about that for next time. I'll add that into my calculations for next month. I did a quick little add adding job here. And so far I have finished knitting 1,187 meters. I don't know. So I don't know how that compares to everybody else. Probably way behind everybody else, but that's okay. I'm still thinking that I'm really happy. I like seeing this stack of dishcloths, everybody. This makes me really excited. 
And I'm getting a few more ball bands in here. And I have a cup. I, one of these months, I'm going to have a big explosion of finished ball bands because all these things that I've been starting, eventually I'm going to get them all done probably in maybe in the same month. And then I'll have a lot of ball bands in here. But I, I don't know. I'm kind of wishing I'd picked a smaller box because this looks like a pretty big box to fill. But I have to say, I like the saying and I like the picture. I like the, I like the pretty box. So we'll see. But anyways, th three more ball bands in there. Not bad. All those dishcloths done and a, and a finished pair of mitts. I'm feeling pretty productive. Now let me show you what I have for my big finish. Now, if you've been watching my new Start Monday videos from the beginning, beginning of the year, this was not started this year. This was started way back last fall. And, hmm, and maybe actually, maybe even in the summer. I think I was, I was supposed to have had it finished for September and somehow, I don't know. It didn't make it. It didn't finish. It didn't get finished. But I did finish it this past week. And I have worn it once. And I cannot be more pleased with this. If you've been following along at all on Instagram, you'll have seen pictures. If you join us on our Friday night live Facebook knit night, it is technically, it is the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In. It's a private group on Facebook and every Friday night I do a two hour live knit night. It's just chatting and knitting. And this sweater has become a uh, popular topic on that video with a lot of questions about have you got your Lopi sweater finished and now I can say 100% I do I have there's a little shot of the the inside all color work and one of my knitting friends, Marg, she was joking with me because the picture I posted on Instagram, I think it was on Monday, I was wearing the sweater, but at, you could only see about this much of me. And she, she when I, we were chatting, doing a video chat on Zoom, and she's like, hmm, I really want to see the cuff of that sweater, Louise. And yes, Marg, the cuffs are finished. <laughs> they are done. They are cast off. Where's the other cuff? right here and all my ends are woven all my ends because you knitters know that how much fun fair isle knitting is doing color work but you also know the like hundred ends that you end up with they're woven and this it fits let me put it on and it is warm this is knit out of lopi I have a love of rustic yarn. I love, I love my Lopi and I have a considerable stash of Lopi yarn. And this was a pattern I used my, my gauge to garment process. Okay, I'll turn around. I can't see myself. I'm not sure what I'm showing you here, but my gauge to garment process. So all it is, is taking your own measurements, finding your gauge, doing some simple math, plugging the numbers in, and you start knitting. And I just literally picked balls out of a big tote of yarn, and I just kind of picked two together. So when I started, down here at the bottom, I just picked a color for some ribbing. I did a three by one rib. And then I just grabbed this green and this white and did a stitch pattern. And had no idea what I was doing next until I got up to here and I grabbed the brown and the white and then I carried on with the brown and the yellow, added the white back in, randomly looked through my stash and grabbed shades of blue and just picked some patterns out of a stitch book and 
then some of them I didn't even follow, totally follow the, the stitch pattern. I started it and then modified it as I was going. And in some places I tried, I tried to match the sleeves to the body, which I did most of the time, but on the sleeves, if you look really, really close, they don't actually completely match the body because I got bored and wanted to switch it up a little bit. So I, <laughs> and here, this is a total new color. This, um, the black and the green and this pattern isn't in the body at all. I just had to do a little modification because I want, I needed a little extra length in the sleeve. So I just added that in and I'm okay with that because I wasn't really going for something that was total matchy matchy. I just knit whatever moved me in the moment. I found some green. Um, I picked up, so what I did was I knit this all in the round. I steaked it up the center. So I added some steak stitches. I got up to, to the arm holes. I divided it, knit the front and the back. I mattress stitched the seam at the top and then I picked up stitches around the arm and then I knit down for the sleeves and cast off at the cuff. And I just did again some simple math, some measuring of the width I want, how much ease I wanted in the sleeves and that's what determined how many stitches I decreased. Kept trying it on a few times kept going, did a few more decreases, cast off, and you have a finished sweater. Just as easy as that. Easy as that. It would have been a whole lot easier if I got it finished sooner, but that's okay. I finished it the day, the day after I finished it, it snowed, so I did wear it. I'm happy with how it fits. Um, I had never intended to put buttonholes and buttons on because in the past, I know from my past experience, I'll do that in the past and I never end up buttoning buttoning them up anyways. I always just like an open front cardigan. And this has great memories because I took this on the trip to Norway. I was actually supposed to have it finished and be wearing it in Norway. That didn't quite happen, but I have good memories when I picked this up. I remember sitting on the train with Asa and Rebecca. I remember knitting it on the train from Oslo to Bergen. I remember knitting on it in the hotel rooms. So you know, maybe it wasn't meant to be finished before then. Maybe it was meant, you know, this has good memories knit into it of a fantastic trip last fall. So now I will just keep it because I know even though the weather has been nice the last couple of days, it is only the end of March. So we all know that spring may technically be here on the calendar, but I'm sure we will still have some snowy cold days yet that I will get to wear this. And in the meantime, I have started a new sweater. So you will see that again, probably on Monday, I'll show you my progress. That is what I've done this month. I'm pretty happy. I'm like really happy. The sweater alone makes it an extraordinary knitting month for me. And then the fact that I've got my dish class up to date and ahead of schedule makes me beyond happy. So leave me some messages in the comments, guys. Let me know, have you finished anything? Are you anywhere as close to finishing something? Do you have something that's been sitting around for a while, like my Lopi sweater, that maybe I've given you a little encouragement just to go grab it out of a closet, pull it out of that project bag and finish it off. So let me know what you're working on. I'd love to know what you're working on, what you're close to finishing and join me again on Monday because I will be showing you some new, more new starts that will eventually make their way into a Finish Friday video. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and I will see you on Monday in the next video. Bye.